Look at this. Do you know what this means? Actually, let's walk over here real quick. Pretend I started here. Do you know what this means? It means that this darn thing doesn't work at all. It's a sometimes vlog. It's a vlog that happens sometimes. Hello, everybody. Do you know where I am? If you watch the sometimes vlog on a regular basis, you know exactly where I am. I am back at the Queen Mary today, successfully filming. I don't know about editing and uploading. Lots of jinxy things can happen. We gotta cross our fingers. Don't wanna jinx it. <laughs> successfully filming Random Land. And I came before, as you remember, with Jeff Heimbuck and Tyler Evans. We were talking to the Commodore. That was some funny stuff. And having a gay old time. And yeah, we were having a gay old time. There's nothing wrong with saying gay old time. Gay means happy, right? You could say we're having a gay old time. A gay old time is fine, right? Everyone's having a gay old time. Just a happy, happy time at the Queen Mary. The happiest of times right here with all of the handsome bellhops and people fist bumping. Anyway, I'm back at the Queen Mary, successfully filming Random Land today. Right there, I was inside of the grounds of the Highland Games. Last time was kind of a failure because I was here with Tyler and Heimbuck. We were filming Crypto Country. Crypto Country got filmed. Heimbuck was here early. Tyler came with me. He was very, very sick. Maybe that guy's wearing a backpack. What do you think he's got in there? Something secret? Snacks? I want snacks. I'm hungry. Anyway, Tyler was very sick. He had a fever. He had to call in sick from Random Land and go home. Well, we had built sort of the whole plan around doing stuff with him, and then I ended up helping Jeff Heimbuck for a while, and then I'm pretty sure I saw a ghost. No lie, we didn't get to talk about that on those sometimes vlog from here before because it happened right afterwards. I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm on board the Queen Mary all day today, and I know it's windy. I apologize. I didn't have time to build the vlog to scale or to paint it, so you may be hearing a little bit of wind distortion and wind noise. I'm just going to upload it however it is because I'm very tired. So I've been here all day, filming randomly, walking around. They're getting ready for the Scottish Games, Highland Festival, whatever the heck it's called. I can't even think. Scottish Festival over there. So we're walking through the security thing because the Queen Mary actually very graciously allowed me to come back and film by invitation to finish the random land to get the additional, really all, but as far as they know, the additional footage that I needed to complete said random land. I only got about three hours of sleep last night. I tried to go to sleep really early. I'm gonna fight my insomnia, right? So 2, 2 a.m., which is early for me. Lights out, no smartphone, no television, no nothing. Sitting there in the dark. Took me till about three to fall asleep. Popped awake at four something in the morning. Wide awake, just totally wide awake. Thought, well, maybe I was thirsty or something. Got a drink, sat there for, I don't know, another hour or so. Fell asleep, woke up another hour later after that. This time, even wider awake, if that's possible. And there was just no going back to sleep. So I've been awake a lot, not much sleep, lots of work. This ship is massive, okay? Listen up. If you're gonna go on this ship for more than the standard length of a tour and a walkabout and kind of a wander through the historical parts, if you're also gonna wander the hotel and the bar and film all kinds of crazy things and go up and down and up and down all the stairs in there, Make sure you bring some comfortable shoes and maybe some knee braces because there is a heck of a lot of walking. This ship right here is bigger than the Titanic. There are many, you can see all the portholes. There are many, many decks on board. I can't even remember how many now. That was one of the facts that made it in the video and I heard several times from passing tour guides, but it's just out of my mind. Of course, this here, this giant buckyball, well, half a buckyball, part of a buckyball, Buckminster Fuller being an architect. I'm not sure, 100% sure if he designed this. That's for you, architecture mirrors. Was the Spruce Goose Dome. Howard Hughes flew his crazy invention of a wooden plane, a giant wooden plane that he constructed during World War II. The idea was it'll save on metal that they need for tanks and ammunition and ships. Not like this, because this was built before World War II, but using World War II, so you get the idea. They need to save metal during the war, so he thought, oh, we'll build a huge cargo plane out of wood. Well, it turns out that's an extremely, extremely difficult thing to do. I'm pretty sure at the time it was the world's largest plane. Certainly the world's largest wooden plane, probably to date. It only flew once, just barely off the surface of the water, and he did it after the war, just to prove a point that it would fly, so that, because uh, they took him to try, you see the aviator, right? So you see the aviator, you know all the stuff. You can Google the spruce because you can get more information. But the one time it flew was out here, it was docked over here, somewhere on Hughes' property, and then later uh, was put into that dome to 
to preserve it and later became a tourist attraction. And so that dome is actually pretty historical. Sadly, the Spruce Goose was dismantled and taken, I believe, up to Seattle or somewhere in Oregon or Washington up north and is now on display up there. So it is no longer adjacent to where it once flew that one time. So we did not get to see the Spruce Goose today, but they have added a little something that I pointed out before to the Queen Mary area, which is this communist submarine. This communist submarine, oh no, the commies. Now, if you grew up before the fall of the Berlin Wall at all, even a year or two, you remember the commies. Every movie, every video game, every everything. What's the commies? They're gonna take over World War III. Luckily that didn't happen. Communism seems to be mostly on the decline, even in the small patches that are left to it. Except maybe for North Dakota, uh, North Dakota, North Dakota. <laughs> so, turns out the commies, well, they were a big threat, but it just turns out communism sank, as the sign says. But look what surfaced here at the Queen Mary, a communist submarine. It's actually kind of cool when you go in the submarine. It's a little bit claustrophobic. You have to have respect for guys who sleep in a submarine, live in a submarine, snuggle in a submarine? Do people snuggle in submarines? I snuggled on the Disneyland submarines a couple of times. Not gonna lie. Good times. Anyway, so, so yeah, so tired walking around. I'm just describing scenery now. That's how tired I was. Forget what I was even gonna talk about. This morning I did the daily woo. With Adam the woo, I was a little more plucky at that point. I had not ground myself down. I had a soda when I came on board. I had the one soda. I bought a Coke to refresh myself. I drank like this much of it. So I really haven't eaten anything except for a banana pretty much all day. I am definitely ready to go home, get a good gluten-free, nutritious meal, maybe take some multivitamins, and take a little rest. Take a little rest, take a load off, before getting up tomorrow and filming yet another random land if possible. So tomorrow, any of you asked if I'd be at Disneyland today? Well, probably. Hey, who knows? You never know. It's 6 o'clock now. I'm not 100% sure I can make it to Disneyland before. It closes at 8. It's early hours. It is a weekday. It is Thursday. Look how beautiful that looks. It looks amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. A beautiful sunset earlier. Oh, I was going to say, I used to live right over here in Long Beach. Um, there you go. There's the aquarium over here, which we have vlogged from before. And I just... Would you mind? We're sometimes vlogging, guy. Rude just over this way, just at the tip of the Queen Mary, just back in there, about mm, ch -ch 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 -ch, one, two, three blocks from the ocean. I lived in a tiny little apartment for a while. But it was cool, Long Beach is a very, very, very cool town. It's very insular though. Once you move to Long Beach, it's a little bit of a black hole in the area of Long Beach I lived in, which I think is called Alameda Beach. It's a little, right next to, it's a little downtown next to downtown. Uh, anyone who's lived in a very cheap apartment in Long Beach has probably lived there at some point. Uh, there's very little parking so what happens is you fight for two three hours sometimes literally to get a parking spot and you're not going to move your car no matter what like at nighttime you know in the daytime in the middle of the day plenty of parking but at night when everyone's coming home from work no parking look at this so you'd walk to get your groceries you'd walk if you wanted to come down to the aquarium or something you'd walk all the way downtown you'd walk to the bookstore you take the bus so you you stay in long beach you make long beach friends you go to long beach clubs and long beach bars and you go to long beach grocery stores and your outside of long beach friends don't tend to visit you all that much when you're in that neighborhood because there's no parking so when they get off work they try to visit you they have to spend two hours trying to find a parking spot they hang out for two hours and then they gotta leave again the good thing is you get their parking spot once they leave so Long Beach is very insular, at least when you live in that neighborhood or you don't have an assigned parking space, it's very, very insular. So it's cool living there. I think we lived there about a year and a half, maybe I think I spent two years in Long Beach. So I would walk down to the Queen Mary quite a bit. What was I gonna tell you guys? Oh, the ghost. All right, now let's see. Disclaimer, I, and I apologize that our vlog really consists today of walking away from the Queen Mary to a car. At least it's beautiful outside, right? We're spending some time together. Mano e mano e ladio e childo e aliens? No. <laughs> As with aliens, kind of on the same level with actually with extraterrestrial life, intelligent extraterrestrial life. Very interesting. I like hearing the stories. I like watching the shows and the documentaries just as much as you do. 
but I am definitely, I would not put myself in the category of a believer. Now, unlike UFOs and aliens though, when it comes to supernatural ghostly things, I will tell you, I will admit, that I just it always does that to me, it gets me every time. We hear ya, close in time, that's what that means. <laughs> when it comes to supernatural stuff, I have actually seen what I know other people would definitely say are ghosts. So I've seen some unexplainable, well, maybe not unexplainable, but I've seen some things that some people would explain as ghosts. So I've seen apparitions, movement, heard strange things, but I am not the kind of person who would automatically attribute it to a ghost. And uh, what is a ghost anyway? Is a ghost a dead person walking around? Does it have to be a conscious dead person? Because I don't buy it. If I were a conscious dead person, unless there's some sort of weird ghost rules, almost like a la Beetlejuice or something like that, there's no way I'd be sticking around in a hallway. You know how you go to a hotel and they say, there's a ghost in this hallway. He always appears in only this hallway and stares at you. I highly doubt that's a conscious thinking person trapped in eternity just because he was in a hallway once. And really, haven't people died kind of everywhere all over the planet? So if it's automatically that ghosts are dead people, would you figure? Just say, I'm, hey, I'm just being skeptical here. It's part of my duty because I'm just being honest. And I'm just asking an honest question. Wouldn't the ghosts be everywhere? Wouldn't every cemetery be all crazy with ghosts? And as my friend Adam the Woo points out, when we discussed this the other night, I will give him full credit for this observation. You know, I thought about this before as well. Why don't you see ghosts in the daytime? Why are they restricted to nighttime when people are more afraid? So there's nothing I wouldn't also attribute to, you know, seeing something out of the corner of your eye. I always think I see spiders. You know, you get the little spot in your eye or something, you turn your eye the wrong way and it looks like, just look at that, that is so cool looking. It just looks like uh, there's like a little ball or something or like a little squiggle in your eye and you blink a couple times, it goes away. So I always think, oh, I saw a spider? No, it's just a thing in my eye or whatever. The human eyeball also has this weird little blind spot in it, this is true. There's always a little spot that your brain fills in actually between your far peripheral vision and your focused vision. There's this little weird spot there that your brain kind of fudges. So you always notice that it's always out of the corner of your eye that you see some kind of spooky apparition or a voice. There's all kinds of, I don't know, everything I've ever been through has some kind of rational, logical explanation. Your mind can play tricks on you, I know that for sure because I have a very active imagination. But, now all that's just preamble to but the other day we were in the engine room of the Queen Mary. I was looking down at my phone. Tyler and Heimbuck were behind me. I could see into this hallway and past this doorway. And I see this person coming. Well, I see the bottom of him looking at my phone. I'm not looking at the person. Just like when I was Disneyland, you know, I, I look down and I, I'm very good at peripheral vision with seeing feet and stuff like that so I can dodge. So I see the feet coming and I start to back out of the way and look up and whoa. Just had one of those weird like, whoa, vertigo. I got dizzy for a second. You stand up too fast, bleh. almost like that. We're just like, whoa, I thought I saw a person. There's no person there, right? So I turned to Heimbach and I say, Heimbach, what is that? Is that on my shirt? Oh no, it is my shirt. It was just folded up weird. So I turned to Heimbach and Tyler and I say, that was weird, man. I really thought I saw a person there. And it actually kind of tripped me out because it's creepy down there. It's creepy, it's dark. You can hear water dripping because the hole is not exactly secure. This boat doesn't go anywhere, you know. It's just kind of sitting there in the water narrowly keeping the water out. They restore it from time to time, so it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about the Queen Mary. But uh, there's all kinds of creepy noises, and they have speakers playing creepy engine noises, and there's air pumps and stuff down there. And of course, the Queen Mary is legendary for being haunted. So I, say, I, saw, I thought I saw a person there coming at us, and then it just in the doorway, just I looked up once I got to the doorway, nobody there. And Heimbuck goes, are you serious? Did he have a beard? And I was like, I don't know if he had a beard because I was just looking down and saw a person coming at me. I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't paying attention to the details. And I certainly didn't see any face or anything. I just saw feet and legs coming at me. You know, lower half of a person. And uh, apparently, according to Heimbuck, who as we know because of the peeing in the shower thing, which we're not going to talk about anymore, but, right, is a little bit of a fibber. He says, though, he claims that the Commodore, who I do believe on the Queen Mary, said that a man was actually documented to be crushed to death in that doorway while he was trying to run through it before it closed. One of those watertight bulkhead type things. That weirded me out a little bit because I had no idea about that. So you know there's the power of suggestion is very strong. So people say, oh, you saw Lincoln's ghost in the White House because you were prepared to see Lincoln's ghost because you heard of Lincoln's ghost. Well, I didn't know there was any ghosts in the weird hallway. I'm not afraid of ghosts. I'm not, I mean, I get creeped out by creepy places like anybody else, but I'm not particularly thinking ghosts or 
I'm going to be scared of a ghost or anything like that. So I wasn't particularly afraid. I'm standing there with other people. It's a little creepy. Claustrophobic, mostly. That definitely weirded me out, though. So then, of course, immediately after that, oh, Tyler's going home with Heimbach because he's sick and they left me all alone on the boat. Now, this is a very large vessel. There's all kinds of hallways and engine room stuff and big open ballrooms and stuff that I was filming. I was getting a little footage the other day. Uh, mostly just, you know, scenery type footage. They left me all alone on the boat. It was so creepy after that. Like, after that, my skin was crawling a little. I don't... I wouldn't say I saw a ghost. I would say I saw what people see when they say they saw a ghost. How about that? So I don't know. I don't know that it was a departed loved one of somebody or some kind of mystical energy left over or an impression or just one of those optical illusion things. I don't know. But I just was pretty sure. Heimbach didn't capture it on film, but he did capture it on film me going to whoa, whoa. And the immediate aftermath of me talking about it like right when it happened in the place. So eventually that will come to life. But the reason I bring it up is today wandering around the ship by myself, I got down to the engine room, which is kind of where all the museum stuff is at the moment. They're doing a lot of remodeling on the ship, but you kind of go down to the little museum part and then you go down to the engine room and down to the very, very lower, lower portion of the ship. And this woman who didn't speak much English, her name was Blanca, very sweet, asked me to go with her down there. I was not planning on returning to the basement by myself because there were not many tour groups at that time on the ship in the morning. So I went down there with her. She asked me about the ghost, so I told her my story. She was pretty terrified. We got down to where it was gonna happen, and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll film it. I'll film it, and maybe I'll put it in the random land, or if it doesn't fit into the video, then I'll take the extra leftover footage and upload it to Facebook or something like that, or share it with you guys on here, on this channel or something, right? You know, just to talk about the little experience more and show it in context and whatever. So I go, okay, well, let's go down here and I'll, I'll film the thing. And she goes, oh no, I've seen enough. So Blanca, who I went down in the engine room to protect from the spirits, who she wanted to leave in peace, she said, respect, <laughs> she left me. I felt like the kid in Jurassic Park, what's her name? She said, he left us, he left us, he left us. That's not what I'm gonna do. Luckily, no one, you know, huskily whispered, you know, running out of breath that to me down there because there was nobody down there. That would have been pretty creepy, but I braved the engine room alone. Kind of like a chicken, though. It was pretty weird. I'm telling you, I would not say, blanket statement, that I believe in ghosts. But once you, you know, even a little bit of like, okay, I accept that that may be an optical illusion or something. But once you go back down in the same spot and it's all creepy, it's pretty creepy. After that, I kind of got turned around and lost down there for a long time trying to find the exit because it's this weird circular thing so i took the shortcut that i thought was a shortcut to get up to the exit but i just i got it wrong in my brain it was a shortcut back to the beginning where i started so i was back around through the whole lower decks thing museum thing and uh and then i was like okay i just need to get outside because i'm starting to get a little claustrophobic i never really get claustrophobic because of the space i get claustrophobic if i feel like i can't get out of the space so unlike someone that you just put them in a closet and shut the door i wouldn't get claustrophobic from that i get claustrophobic from i've been walking for a long time in a hallway and none of the doors will open and i can't get out so I started getting a little claustrophobic. I finally got up to the hotel portion of the Queen Mary in there through a weird back door I probably wasn't supposed to be through. So now I'm in the hotel hallways. And I thought, okay, this is probably good enough. I'll just start getting some footage of the hotel corridors. And then I got really claustrophobic in there because I also could not find a working exit, even the fire exit. I would have gone out the alarm door at that point. I actually started to get unusually for me claustrophobic inside the Queen Mary. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, say anything paranormal happened today but it was pretty creepy and i did constantly think i was hearing voices and stuff it's all kinds of vents and tourists and um a carnival cruise ship unloaded a bunch of australian people were actually really awesome i like aussies i had a lot of fun with the aussies today on board this british vessel anyway battery's low so if it suddenly cuts off i apologize it is what it is anyway so got pretty claustrophobic on the queen mary today so i wouldn't say it was a totally paranormal day but i also wouldn't immediately some skeptics are just hardline skeptics no matter what you throw at them they're just gonna be full skeptic i will say i am open to the possibility of hearing alternative explanations for things like that because it was pretty weird the other day i wouldn't trust any vibe of a place because i get vibes in all kinds of places i know nobody died or nothing creepy happened it's just a weird place or a weird environment or there's you know some kind of electromagnetic pulse or something i get weird vibes you know from people sometimes mm, creepy but 
definitely it was weird seeing the thing and it was definitely weird that there was a corroborating story not only in the historical record but with like, apparently hundreds and hundreds of visitors who also haven't heard the story that was interesting that's the first time i've seen a quote unquote ghost type of thing where other people reported the exact same thing in the exact same spot and i had no clue no idea so that was actually pretty interesting pretty cool experience it's kind of like when you meet someone's like i think i saw a ufo one time you know it's like maybe because i now i have that like, i think i saw like a ghost once like a documented ghost one time it's pretty interesting for the queen mary there all by myself definitely recommend coming out to the queen mary very very cool thank you queen mary for letting me come back thank you joanna and thank you jeff heimbuck who told them at the front that my nicky called for me when he called back to see if i could come back because he had been talking to the woman before he left my name at the check-in as Jeff Heimbuck's manservant, Justin Scarb. So thanks for that, Heimbuck. I have to think of a Heim. You guys will have to help me think of a prank to get Heimbuck back, but there's no way we can let him see it in public. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Heimbuck prank. Nothing mean. Just something along those lines. No, we don't need escalation. Slight escalation, maybe. No, let's be nice to Heimbuck, right? We prank him enough. Or do we? There are some wonderful stickers coming if you've been following us on Instagram. Anyway, I might have seen a ghost on the Queen Mary. I'm sorry it took me 22 minutes to spit out the story, but there you have it. 22 minutes of nonsense. It's just weird, you know? I, you don't want to say like, I think we saw a ghost, bro. You want to like give the context. I want to explain that I'm not like paranoid or I'm not one of those people that's super, super into ghosts. I have no problem with people who are, that's fine. I just don't, I'm not, I, have, I don't have that, I lack conviction when it comes to the paranormal. But, it was weird. I will say that. Weird. Very, very weird. So I'm very, 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 very tired. We're not gonna get into any, any feels or anything. Thank you guys for two days ago for watching the vlog of feels about the origins of the question of positivity, leaving all kinds of cool comments everywhere. It's not that I didn't read them. Some of them I can't reply to. Uh, it's not that I didn't read them and that they weren't very touching. Thank you all. It's that I sort of put that out there so that I wouldn't have to talk about it again and we can just move forward, right? Keeping positive, staying positive, working hard. Not that it's not difficult still for me, but just saying, just to reiterate, I'm putting it out there so that we don't have to talk about it. I got a lot of messages from people, bro, this and this. Thank you for sharing your stories with me. I just don't want to reciprocate with going into any more detail ever about that, really. No point, not bitter, not angry, still hurts, but I'm going forward. So anyway, the Queen Mary, there it is. So we'll be back on Sometimes Vlog tomorrow. When I have a lot more energy, I'll do it way earlier in the day. This just had to get done because it got all hind bucks the other day and Tyler was sick. And so I was like, I was on a mission today to accomplish this. But if you want some zany antics, Adam the Woo and I were pretty hyper. <laughs> we were pretty hyped up on Mountain Dew this morning. So go over to Adam the Woo's second channel, The Daily Woo, youtube.com slash The Daily Woo. No spaces. Leave a comment there and tell him I sent you. You can see also my new Hawaiian shirt that I got for Tiki Tuesdays. I had never really worn a Hawaiian shirt before. I was very uncomfortable, but I looked very relaxed. So anyway, guys, I love you all. Thank you for watching all of this nonsense. There will be way cooler nonsense coming up. All kinds of awesome stuff is happening and coming up in the works. I was gonna vlog on the boat. Every time I tried something crazy or weird would happen, something got in the way and my phone died for a long time. I plugged it in the wall before I got all the way off the boat before it closed so that we could at least get a little bit of juice. 20 minutes of talking. Now I'm going to go home and upload this. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. Subscribe for some more Sometimes Vlogs if you haven't already. Make sure to hit me up on Twitter. If you're going to try to get a hold of me, probably now the best way is probably Twitter. At the moment, that's why I check the most. At Justin Scarred or at Live Fast I Pour. I do check that one also. They're supposed to help me check that one, that Tyler and that Heimbuck, but they never do. It's usually just me. So get at me on Twitter. I usually do see the at, you know, whatever stuff. I think that's it. Just remember guys, live fast. You might die poor, but you're gonna have a lot more fun on the way and you can't take it with you. Okay, so that's a warning for some people, but for some people, it's a promise. Not everybody wants the same kind of life, all kinds of different life. No such thing as normal. No such thing as a normal life, it's just life. I'm gonna get into my Mustang now, which is obnoxiously loud, like the horn of the Queen Mary, and drive home in what I know is definitely not a haunted vehicle. That's all I can think of to say at the moment. Thank you all for paying attention. Love ya. We'll be back. You can keep writing me. Uh, I do not check Facebook Messenger. 
Let me just put that out there really quick. So a lot of people send me Facebook Messenger things and sometimes people are like, but it said you read it. I don't. Sometimes it pops up and it says read because I'm scrolling through or it pops up while I'm using Facebook or it pops up in an app sometimes too, which I don't even know why I have. I do use it to send messages sometimes with their specific people. And sometimes I'll catch one of your messages by accident. I'll reply for a little while because I know that it's in there. But by and large, I really don't use that. If you really have to get a hold of me, something crazy important on the website, there's an email that does get to me and there's a serious business one if there's some really crazy thing that has to happen. And of course, there's Instagram and Twitter. Go there. YouTube comments is a lot harder because there's so many random land videos and so many comments and you get so many notifications. It's just, it's all cluttery with the old videos getting comments from people who are just finding those. It's really hard to sort through. So Twitter, definitely just want to put that out there. And I'm only putting that out there because some people are like, I really, I've been trying to get a hold of you. Well, that's the way. Use the social media. For a long time I fought Twitter and, and Instagram and all that stuff. I know I look like a crazy person with all the selfies, but it's just because we're sharing. I have met all of you. I just want to say this too, actually, about the, continuing the whole quest for positivity thing. You guys helped a heck of a lot. Honestly, sincerely from the bottom of my heart, you guys have been super amazing. First from the random land videos, then from the sometimes vlog and the quest for positivity together. You guys send me letters and all kinds of crazy stuff, which by the way, you can still do the free sticker thing. Go to our Facebook page, slash live fast I pour, scroll down, you'll find, or our Instagram, live fast I pour. You'll see the thing to get a free sticker. Find out how. And you guys send letters and stuff and presents and all kinds of cool stuff like that. You guys really did help me stay on my own quest for positivity. So I really, really, really love hearing from you about all that kind of stuff. But if you need to get a hold of me or something, or you have something funny, funny joke, or some picture to share, definitely not Facebook, definitely Twitter. That's the way to go. And now I've gone on too long. Now we're, uh, now we've hung out even longer, but there's nothing wrong with that, right? Spend most of my life hanging out in parking lots in a band, waiting for shows to start, stuff like that. So I'm pretty used to it. But you guys gotta go. You got more important stuff to do. Like go watch the Daily Woo right now where we were interrupting a TV interview. That's what we were doing. Someone was getting interviewed for the news and we were interrupting them and we sang a sparkling rendition of the Gilligan's Island opening theme song. All right, this thing is telling me that my battery is at 2%, which means I gotta go. When your battery is down to the percentage of fat in milk, it's kind of a sign, right? All right, time to go, guys. Remember, nothing good happens after 2 a.m. and nothing good happens after 2% battery. All right, I gotta go. Love ya. Peace out.